So how do we prepare a hospital based cage? Okay, first and foremost, we have a water dripper, which is fixed securely at one end and is remaining in, in position so that if it's bumped, it's not going to swing around. And so the animal won't bump into that area. We lay paper into there, followed by we have um, individual mats, hospital mats that fit our cages. So they're quick to lay, which is great. And into that, we will also put a snuggle safe, which is warmed up to provide a heat source that they can move on to. And another mat, which is comfortable over the top. So they've got different levels in there of warmth that they can position into. Now, the little girl that we're preparing this for, it's really important that she can move around easily. And if you put shavings or sawdust in there, that can be quite difficult for them. In this case, we want her to have a solid surface, but soft enough that she can get comfy within that space. And of course, we need to be aware of ambient temperatures around the cage and shading, but it needs to be a small restricted space because she's incredibly unwell and we want her to remain relatively within a small moving area. So into this, we're going to place some food now. It's really important that with any bowls that you choose to place into there, it is um, that they're small and they're ceramic, so they're heavy and they're not going to be easily knocked over or move. Now, in this instance, I've just put a water bowl in there, but I'm actually going to take it out again because this girl, her, her sight is heavily in question and I don't want her to fall face first into water where it could be quite dangerous for her. But I wanted to show you how we would put that in if the animal was needing a restricted space but could easily find where water is. We could have a dripper or we could have a, um, a bowl there. And there's reasons we would do that as well. Okay, into a little food bowl, we can put smaller pieces of food and this is quite good if you've got animals that have got dental issues that you can position food a little bit elevated above where they're situated in the cage and that you can um, give them food that is cut up a little bit smaller that they don't necessarily have to tear apart so i've put some little pieces of shredded carrot into there which are very thin blades and a bit like grass, easy to eat as compared with um, having to bite into something more solid if they're recovering from dental surgery, for example. Okay, the last thing, and this is something you hear me talk about all the time, which is ponytailing food. It's really important that you do this because guinea pigs that are unwell often are unstable, unsteady, find it difficult to eat. So whatever the issue is, they, they often are not able to manage their food very well. So we ponytail the food. And what that means is literally to gather together, and you can do this with hay as with grass, but you gather it together into a bunch like this using an elastic band. You literally are going to create a ponytail out of this food, like so. And I'm messing it up a little bit, that's okay. Just around and around and around into a little ponytail and what we're then going to do is put that into the side of the cage like this and I'm going to clip that on with a bulldog clip so that it remains in situ in that position. Now the reason is that when guinea pigs are unwell if they're unstable on their feet if they've got sight issues if they're recovering they often sit or lay on the food before they then want to try and eat it particularly those that have had dental surgery they sit and lay on the food, they've urinated on it, and of course they haven't got the dexterity and the ability with their mouth at the moment to pick up those blades of grass. So it becomes too hard. Whereas if we have it elevated like this, they literally can walk into it and they'll find it easy to grab one of those and nibble away. It keeps their head elevated and the food clean and well, and it actually assists them in grasping it so they can eat more. So ponytail your food straight into the edge. It does mean that you may have to change that a couple of times a day, but you'll come back and you'll actually find at around this distance, it's all eaten off. A good indication that that's taking place. You also need to weigh your animal daily. So when you have them in a small cage space like this, in order to know what their food consumption is, truly you must weigh them every single day. 
and keep that on a chart so that you can monitor carefully whether they're increasing or decreasing. So this little girl is a Cavi Central adoptee who has returned to us tonight a week after she found her forever home, along with a number of others actually. They are all fine and well, but today the owner was really worried about her because she is moving very awkwardly. Now, it's Sunday here, and what we've decided to do is treat her based on what we can establish. And she's been given pain relief as well as anti-inflammatories, and tomorrow she'll see the vet. So for now, we're keeping her comfortable. And I just wanted to share with you some of the things that you need to look for with guinea pigs as to what is life-threatening immediately and what you can manage until the vets are actually open. So right here, right now, with the exotic vets, most of them are manned by veterinary nurses at night and the exotic vet staff or the exotic doctors are not there until morning. But uh, in this case, it looks like what's happened, and, and I'm guessing, is that she has fallen down a ramp because she's exhibiting neurological symptoms and she's far better than she was several hours ago in that the pain relief and anti-inflammatory seem to be working. So when guinea pigs do take a tumble, they can bump and hurt parts of their body, like their spine, like their skull, in, in any sort of way. And the symptoms that she was exhibiting today seem to be blindness. She simply couldn't see and very disorientated in her movement. It's very clear as well that it's affecting her down this right-hand side. Now, she's a guinea pig that is well over two years of age, and she may have, in fact, injured something on this right-hand side, or it may be that she's had something like a stroke, which is also impeding this. In both cases, anti-inflammatories is what would be given. So she's been given the appropriate treatment, and we're monitoring her, and we can keep her safe, calm, and comfortable until morning. But I wanted to share this with you because she's alert, she's able to eat, and we've weighed her, we're monitoring her really carefully. You might just get to see here how she's starting to move. You can see she's quite unsteady on her feet. And because we can keep her calm and well with her food in the hospital cage, we'll be able to, to keep her happy that way. Poor little girl, what's happened to you? Hmm. So from what we can we can tell, the other thing is she's thermoregulating. So she is keeping warm enough, but we will give her a support heat in there. So that's quite a positive. She's looking, she's actually got one whisker out here. She's missing one on that side. Hmm. Hello, sweetie. We know she's eating really well. I half suspect she may have injured her ribs in this region. Now, with ribs, the important thing is lack of movement and that you're keeping them restricted in their movement so that healing can occur. And of course, broken ribs can puncture other organs. So we know from her output that her poop and urine is all clear. So I'm quite happy she's not bleeding internally. When she first arrived, she was almost hyperventilating, whereas now her breathing is actually steady and even on the pain relief. So there's lots of symptoms and um, things that we look for in, in their general appearance as to how they're, they're going. For her, she seems to be managing quite well right now in that quiet environment. It is important when you've got an injured animal like this that they are removed from their friends because their friends are quite jumpy and could easily hop on top of them or knock them over, sit on top of them. And of course, that then becomes more life-threatening than it already is. So her owners have acted really quickly in getting her here. And um, because it is a Sunday night and because of all the restrictions we've had with the virus, um, it makes it very difficult to get to see vets quickly and easily. So we can help her greatly just in taking the steps that we are. I'm just gently feeling her tummy here.
it was a bit painful in there. Did you hear her move? It was a little bit pain. It's painful there, is it, sweetheart? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little bit painful. It's him here on this side. And certainly right now she's sitting still. She's not wanting to walk and move around. When she first arrived, she was literally trying to struggle and toppling over and almost appearing as though she was blind. But through elimination, we've really established that any injury has occurred on this side. Her legs on both the top, top right and bottom left, bottom right appear to be quite normal there's no abnormal swelling there and they're not responding differently but there's certainly pain in this region so I think she's actually hurt the rib area and of course she's you know she's very uncomfortable with that so the best thing for her is a quiet comfortable cage where she can recover really well now critical care feeding is another part of managing animals like this because they're not moving and it's important that if they're not moving towards their food, she's bright and alert. And if I put food in front of her, she'll gobble it up, which is really great. But um, making it accessible and easy for her to eat. So when it's up like this, you can see she can easily grab it. Can you get that? Oh, here we go. This is the toppling that we're talking about. So put that there. When she gets the food, she can easily eat it. So there's nothing wrong with her ability to eat, but she's very unsteady in this area. So we don't want her moving much at all. We want her on pain relief until we can establish exactly what is going on with her. And this is where the ponytail can work really well because we can have that positioned right in front of her and she can nibble away comfortable and happy until um, such time as she needs something different. When animals are not moving around much like she isn't at the moment, hydration is also important. So we can critical care feed them, but we also need to be aware of hydration. So ponytailing the food, you can see how it's clipped to the outside to hold it secure and it means that the piggy in a contained area can access it very easily. You can ponytail hay as well as your grasses that way. Birds suggest that the hay be a soft type of grass like Timothy or some of the softer uh, grasses. You don't want any pokey bits on it. So in this case, she's still trying to just manage is on anti-inflammatories and um, we will see what they say tomorrow. Hospital cage, they also need a hide. So what we do is place over the top a cover so that within that space, it is like a little hide that she can move in and out of. You can see she's going for a drink there. So she's able to move herself around, which is really good. We're going to gauge that carefully. Good girl. She's doing okay, but she's very sore. You can see she's very thirsty. She's wanting more water, even though she's been given some. Good girl. <laughs> 